I am unashamed. What about you? I haven't seen any teal, but there's well, there's a good there's well, good water Saturday, there's good there. water on the dog, and there's there's water up if you hunt the elbow if you hunt around there on that uh, well, the north elbow, side. I think is where we need to the hunt. elbow if you hunt on the north side. There's north water. Side. North side, you know, you're uh, you're right here on the end. Yeah, if there's not if there's not any on the east side, uh, but there's it's it's a water around there a little bit, but it's it's pretty narrow. But I mean, it, it's water there. So they may. You just, realize this is the first yeah, podcast that we talk about duck hunting. I mean, the real deal in almost a year. Yeah. So it, it's at least at least we can February. mention that in a minute if y'all well, want. We're mentioning it right now. We're rolling. Oh, is that We've right? We've been talking this whole time. Well, look, when, listen to this. When me and Jeff... <laughs> I love when we turned it on before Dad knows. Jeff and I were coming back the other day from Texas. Of course, I leave early because of traffic. So I left at like 5 o'clock. But as soon as that sun... The, it was still the glow. We're going out in the middle of Texas somewhere. I said, look, Jeff. Of course, Jeff's looking. You know, he's looking for a cow or something. <laughs> A huge bunch of teal just look, they just flew right in front of me. I mean, literally in gun range. Good night. And I said, That's the sign. <laughs> yep. Jeff said, The sign for what? I said, That, the, that it's here. The passage is yep. beginning. Yeah. I mean, we're in South Texas. So, 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 there's so good where would you there. rather start Saturday morning? On the dog, or you want to try up over well, on the I thought the, the dog elbow. didn't have any water. Dogs have plenty of water. I had to lower the foot. It's hmm. per, I, I got I re, refurbished that sec, scaffold there. I refurbished it. We'll have to take a P rogue down there, leave it if you or just drive the Argo out there, go around, come around the other side. I think I'm gonna need to look before you leave. I make that decision. Yep. I'm gonna have to take a look because there's, no, there's no, the there's food no, there's no grass. Supply, the food, oh, <laughs> that's ripe. That's right. You're correct. So they would just be coming in just. To, that's correct. So that's why I just said. You know, I, I, it doesn't make me any difference at all. I think we got about a must change as one as well, the other. Right. Yeah. Teal. But, have you teal. seen any teal here? Not a teal. I haven't seen it. But, well, uh, I saw the bunch in Texas. That yeah. was what, two days ago? There is supposed to be a cool down coming pretty quick next next button within a week. <laughs> For our listeners, the cool down is instead of the high being 95, <laughs> it's 88. That's right. I don't know if I could call that a cool down. <laughs> it's going to be slightly less Hot. <laughs> Fog was hanging in the bottom out here this morning. First time I've seen that. It's, it was hanging here early, so it's yeah. cooling down. You get a little bit more. You, and at yeah. night, especially when you yeah, can it's tell. Hot. It's hot. No, it's not. I'm just telling you, when you see low-hanging fog, and it was cool right here in this bottom right here. That was, this thing. Is, I would say it was 69 this morning yep. before daylight. Yep. That's still pretty warm. I mean, what do you set your central air on? Uh. 74 or 75. Good grief. That's hot. <laughs> it's always hot in their house. <laughs> I, and then I'm like, my bedroom, my... 72. <laughs> but just uh, well, over. We need to explore this. Now, what? what... You, I, you, it's real. The short expiration. If you put it at 75, <laughs> it won't run all day. You put it on 72, it'll sit there and run for 10 hours without going off. It ain't got the juice to cool it down. Well, you need a bigger unit. Bigger unit, a little more, and you know what? What they put in there, they run run out of a whatever they run out of. <laughs> what is that? Uh, no, is that, that the what's it called? Cool it, uh, freon. 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 I need a little freon. freon. Yeah. I thought you meant insulation. It gets a little <laughs> low on freon, and then then you're trying to cool it down to seventy two. It's just gonna run all day. Okay, she did it. I just said, I said, get away from that. It's, I'm not gonna listen to that thing run all day. The temperature don't change and it runs ten hours. I don't care. She said, "Well, it says seventy. I said, "I don't care what it says." Get away you from need it. to get some insulation in yeah, there. Yeah, maybe need a little more insulation. Yeah, all right. Of course, it is. It is the 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 inner structure is the original house that was built in seventy seventy two. Two. But are you like me? Or do you feel like you need to see that first bunch of teal before you? I, I, it's like I have, to, I have to see, see that, but I saw that on an interstate, and now I'm like, all right, we're here. Because usually I've gone dove hunting by now, but you know the hurricane all messed all that up. You know, nobody killed any doves around here. 
Oh, the so hurricane I, blew them out of here, didn't it? I guess. I mean, I didn't even think it, about that. It, it should have. <laughs> I if seen, I was I've a seen bird, very few squirrels <laughs> since that time, and no cranes. <laughs> well, Phil, I mean, that wind. I literally was, every morning see a group of squirrels that was in a tree. They're trying to make do. They had a nest in the tree. The tree blew down, and they won't just go to another tree. You know, it's in a neighborhood. So, but I mean, they're like. They're still living in the tree on the ground, <laughs> yeah. but it's they're bewildered. Yeah. So I mean, they I guess you know. Well, I was life. driving out here today, and I took Ike Kelly, which is kind of a, you know, not many houses, mostly logging area and hunting area, and I would say there were probably at least a dozen to fifteen trees that had. Obviously, it come across the road because I could see where they had cut them off. Right down here, where I we mean, I mean, it was unbelievable. Jace, there are hundreds. Yeah, I wonder of trees about the property. Down. Look like I really liked that sermon I heard Sunday. Uh, the guy who filled in for you, Tommy. Tommy, yeah. He 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 was coming out of that place where God took the foolish things of the world to shame the wise and think of what you were when you were called. And, because he did, I do a similar thing when I have my speeches or whatever. Because I, you know, you look at the creation, it points to the creator, and you look at an acorn right. compared to a tree. And he's like, "Hey, I got for all you intellects, all you ones that are saying this all happened by a natural process that you really can't explain." He's like, or they may ask, you know, prove that there's a God or. Show me Jesus. And he's like, I got something for you. All these trees that are laying down, go make one. <laughs> Just this And you science, don't get an acre. He said, you don't get an acorn. <laughs> yeah. And, and you, you get no get a, acorn. You get no acorn. Because we're looking at acorn saying, okay, some force is causing this to happen. I remember being confused in school. I fifth sixth grade yeah they introduced the word photosynthesis and i thought no i need to look into that <laughs> because i was thinking that is what's causing everything to live who is this photosynthesis oh it's just a word they made up it sounds <laughs> sophisticated let me give you a good idea you can drive over there that 400 acres we just bought added on to the deal you drive through there and i'm looking out across there it's old growth timber, and I could just see tree after tree after tree after tree blown down, broke down. But look, underneath all of the the, the upper story, the leaves, just looking out across the ground, there literally are. I see the ones laying down that just blew over. There are millions of seedlings. They're about this long. They're about six to eight inches tall. Oak seedlings, millions, so much you can't see the ground. It's solid seasoning. It's, it's, uh, it, it's just solid. Them little bitty trees about yeah. six, eight inches tall. I mean, there's a crop coming underneath that thing. <laughs> they could have all blown down and it all, give them about a 75 years and whew, <laughs> all of them would be exactly back. Just like the other one. Yeah. But he made a good point. He said, to be honest, they can't, the most highly intellectual scientific community of the world, most not believing in God, they can't make anything on purpose. Thousands. <laughs> they of can't make, look, they can't make anything on purpose, but they expect you to believe that it all happened by accident. Yeah, by chance. Just think about that. <laughs> oh, it, it was quite a statement. One acre this big. They're all over the ground out there now. The wind, the hurricane blew them all off, blew a lot of them off. They're all on the ground. The deer are having a big time. Everybody's eating. Up the, the, they're laying all over the ground. But if you just look at it, you say one acre turns into tons of wood. One tree, tons. Yep. You just think of one little acre. What creating just coming up and you look at it in 75, 80 years and you're like, it's like this. Right. I mean, just you could build a house out of it. Yeah. One one acre. 
pretty amazing. Well, I tell you this: if you were a tree hugger, now is that they need you because <laughs> yeah. they are laying down. There's a lot of hugging. Can you imagine all. if you had just been over there, out there walking around when all that was happening? Hey, I mean, <laughs> it took two days with a bulldozer leading the way, and 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 I had my four wheeler with a good chainsaw and plenty of oil and gas. Just cleaning up here, there, and yonder around there, you know. Yeah. But it took two day, two full days to even get down there to where we duck hunt. Just to cut in, to cut your trees way in. across the road. I mean, big trees. Well, we've all heard what it sounded like. It when hurt tree my falls. feelings. I mean, it's a it's a frightening sound when just one tree falls. And, I mean, they make right. a racket. Can you imagine all those things just one right after the but other? But it is a good. I'm not point. a tree hugger, we, Jace, we, but we, it, we, it hurt my feelings. Well, <laughs> so many had fall, I, fallen. I said one time, the only tree that I hugged the cross of Jesus because yeah. of who was on it. I mean, but the point is, if you just took an acorn, I mean, if you just had a display as far as the evidence of God and went around with an acorn and take people outside and look at a tree and just say, explain this. S- sermon over. <laughs> it, it, experiment over. Yeah. It, we just take that for granted. I know? know it. Just like we do when our bodies heal. Nobody really explained that. You know, the, they'll, they'll say, well, the doctors That's patch you. That's one of the reasons. They, they patch you up, but they don't, they don't ignite heal you. the healing That's process. That's one of the reasons I plant trees. We planted thousands of bald cypress because the world needs more bald cypress. But those bald cypress, we, we, we planted those with the help of the, the, with the uh, Latinos that work for the government, whatever, they come over there. And they plant a lot of them, and then we plant a lot ourselves. So they started out about eight inches long. Yeah, me and old dad. Look, the little seedlings about like that. You just can't even see them in the grass, and you just watch them. And now they're up there about 12 feet tall, mm-hmm. and you're like, good grief. Man, this is getting prettier as the day. Each year they get prettier. Right. It's a sight to see. Yeah, and it's, uh, I mean, it's one we all observe. But it's just, you know, uh, the thing that struck me about the hurricane and I was thinking about what you just said. I mean, you look at tree growth in terms of decades. That's right. You know, what it does. But isn't it something how, to Tommy's sermon, because his sermon was called Defeat the Thief, and he was mm-hmm. kind of coming out of John 10 with the idea about the thief is here to kill and destroy, but Jesus came to give us abundant life. You know, it's that passage. But I, th- I thought about that. You, one storm came through here, and it was just a few hours when it went by here. Mm-hmm. But look at what it what it tore down in that Ooh. few hours of destruction compared to what it takes to build that up over years. And I thought, you yeah. know, it, it really is a lot harder to build something than it is to destroy something. And I thought about that the week before. Mike did a thing on, showed some video of people out here cleaning up in our community. And they were smiling and neighbors helping neighbors and people got chainsaws and they're cutting their way and cutting it off their neighbor's house. And then I, I you know, contrasted that to people going down in city streets and just destroying everything in sight, just spray painting it, ruining it. And I thought, man, is that not a contrast that we're looking at about good and evil? You know, here we got a community that says, we're going to help you rebuild and build up your property. Another group says, we're going to destroy everything on our side. And I thought, that's the contrast. You know, when you The look old at judge it. that lives up there where the gate is, a big tree just fell Missed the gate, got one of my poles, video surveillance, got one of those and knocked it down. Oh, boy. <laughs> brought his fence to the ground. And, I mean, you were not getting by there without a chainsaw or a bulldozer or a track hoe. So red, and we went out there, you know, and cut that log up and just, so we could drive through to get out of here yeah. if we needed to be. But all that other stuff, the, the energy people come in and said, We'll remove it. We'll remove all that off of that. So they, they it took, took a week to get power out here. It took a week. Out, and they had to rebuild everything. Let's take a quick break. So one of the things that uh, COVID nineteen, we've been talking a lot about it on the podcast. Um, one of the things that it unfortunately has done is uh, brought up cyber crime. It's up seventy five percent over just six months ago. Because of the pandemic? Well, because there's more people yeah. online, and so there's more people driving the, the, this, cro- the crooks. This see? Would fall in the heading of those who invent ways of doing evil. Exactly. They'll virtually steal your house. I, and, didn't, and, I didn't realize Yeah, that. and so that, the they can literally do it because the legal title to your home is online. These guys get on there, and so it's home title theft, and that's what they do. They basically 
forge your signature, um, they quit claim your deed, and then they refile as the owner of your home. So then they run up all these loans, and all of a sudden somebody shows up at your house and says, uh, "You're you're out. You know you foreclose on your loan, but you 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 never knew somebody got it." It's terrible, but I would love for someone to show up and tell you that. I just want to. I would I, love to. See, yeah, I would like to. I'd love that. to see how that worked out. Yeah. <clears throat> so the first thing you got to do is you got to go to hometitlelock.com. Hometitlelock.com. You register your address to see if you're already a victim. Then you use the code Phil. You get thirty days uh, free for protection of your home. So that's code Phil at hometitlelock.com. But it puts it in perspective about stuff. You know, a lot of people are so obsessed with stuff. One storm should put it in perspective for you. It should. Yeah. They don't put your hope in that. <laughs> but you see it. I mean, people are just, you know, it reminds me of the story about the guy building, you know, he spent his whole life putting all his stuff in the barn, and then you got to build, build another big, barn. Build another barn. I mean, where's it going to stop? Four months' time. Let's see. Pandemic. Uh, let's see. Wildfires, hurricanes. Look, it's just a, <laughs> it's just the way it is. It's you always going to be suck something. it up. You just got to suck it up and say, "Hey, but let's put it back together here, best we can, and rock on." Right. That's true. Yeah, but he had a good point because the simplicity of life is that you know when you read the account in Genesis, you know God breathing life into man's nostrils and. I mean, when and you see life on the planet, it to me is so simple that there has to be a source for that. Because to me, and, and people will look at me and call that foolish thinking. They'll look at you and, right now, Jace, when you say, how did it get here? And they'll say, a large explosion. I'm like, the, the Big Bang, yeah, the large. I said, well, what was there right before it exploded? <laughs> What, what, what was there? Who lit that fuse? And, and, and All they, right. they, they, then they'll tell you, they said there was nothing there. I said, so how does nothing explode? If yeah. nothing, nothing can't explode. Well, it was a firecracker, but I, every time I'm full of firecrackers, <laughs> is somebody <laughs> lights the thing and then it goes boom. <laughs> <laughs> and when I was a kid, young and stupid, I, you know, first one I took, I lit it because I was thinking I'd have time to throw it. But I was so enamored, it's pow. <laughs> you didn't like, do you that did, anymore. You did that uh, no didn't more. Do that though. anymore. You know. <laughs> and of course, speaking mom, of that, mom was like, "What'd you do?" And I was like, "It just, you know, it's like, <laughs> it's like any deal. other kid. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? It's like it just went off. Yeah. Yep." Did you it's see kind of like some of the boys uh, setting off all those fireworks. Every once in a while, I noticed one of those guys gets on fire. Oh, yeah. They roll into And what you do see? you do with a kid that says that? You whoop his butt because he's lying. But somebody out here saying that all this just went off. <laughs> I'm like, yep. You Would need you your butt whooped is what you need. <laughs> Did but. you see the uh, story from yesterday? No, it was yesterday. It was sometime this past day or two, Labor Day weekend, that – they have these things now. This it's a big turn into a big industry that to reveal the gender of your baby. So a woman's pregnant, and they find out it's a boy or girl. So they get all the family and friends together, and so they they're now coming up with different ways to you know tell what that is. It's turned into these big reveal parties. This is a big thing going across the country. So they, the woman wants you to know whether. It's a female or a That's male, right. yeah, and it will, it will. So they got one. That's Why like, would that be such a big test? I mean, it's like you know. can't do anything about it. I don't understand it, but but it's a it's a thing. So out in California, there's a couple. You know, California is a tinder box. You know, they you, you talk about light a match and burn the whole thing. I mean, it's just ready to burn. So they do one of these pyro deals, and it's supposed to shoot out either a blue if it's a boy or pink if it's a girl, some sort of firework hmm. display. So they fire it off. Unfortunately, something goes wrong, and they catch one of them wildfires that's still going, or it was last that's night. That's how the fire started. And that's how the fire started, on a gender reveal party. Look, it's already burned 8,000 acres, the last report I heard on it. And now they've had 6,000 fire. You know, I mean, and of course, now they're saying this couple can go to jail. They're, they're responsible to pay for It does for beg the question, what were they thinking? I mean, yeah, it just makes you, and then you're like, but what, I would hate to live in a place where one wrong move and you can burn the whole place down. I mean, I, I don't know which which is worse in that situation, but it does seem kind of trivial 
yeah. <laughs> over there. When all you had to do was say, it's a girl. You know, just you could do it that way. I've seen ones where they, they open up a package and then the balloons come out. And they're either pink or, you know, which is a lot more safe, I guess, than the pyro. But when you said that about the fireworks, I was thinking this yeah. poor couple just burned and they're still burning. Well, that's kind of sad. Thousands, it's, t- it's awful. It's terrible. Yeah. And that, now they're going to probably I mean, get. I like a good fireworks, but <laughs> if if you like fireworks, you don't need to be living in California. Don't I do guess. it in California. California always burned up every year. You know, they always have a lot of wildfires out there, but it's it seems to be. Of course, they're all saying it's global warming, but it seems to be worse the last twenty years to me. But maybe we just didn't have. 24 hour media where every time yeah. there's a fire somebody's watching you know maybe what I'm saying maybe that's what it is I mean you know I don't remember it being as bad as it is but it's it's not good I mean well when I went to Yellowstone you know in Montana a few few weeks ago I mean there were the one of the the things the guy kept saying is you know that was the fire of 2017 yeah. there's the fire of 2014 there's 2010 he kept remember when we like, were in well, y'all have a lot of wildfires around here <laughs> well remember we yeah. were in Tahoe playing golf the same thing I mean the, the whole side yeah. of one of them mountains up there it just torched you know I mean it's just it's it's so dry but the whole point is when you look around on the earth I mean you start talking about disease fires earthquakes i mean i would look if there was the slimmest chance that there was an actual designer and and a being that was the author of life wouldn't you at least be open-minded enough to say this place is dangerous <laughs> it's combustible that's right it you got hurricanes coming up and typhoons and storms and fires and and the and the bottom line is we're perishable Yep. Look, I would, I would, uh, to me, it would be more intelligent to look for a way around all that. I mean, to me, that's not foolish at all. They're like, oh, that's, that's simple minded, foolish thinking. When he's right, when you scrape everything away, just make a tree. No, nope, you do like everybody else. You throw it in the ground. You can call it some big fancy photosynthesis word. And then you get back out of the way. And guess what? Something makes it grow that you can't explain. <laughs> you can't do it. And you can't hardly even stop it. Yeah. It's amazing. You know, one of the things is when we went and filmed for that um, episode, that Hawaii episode for Duck Dynasty, uh, we stayed on the big island. And I just marveled. It, it was almost like this little create, you know, creation Petri dish. Because we're on that, that big rock, and it's the biggest island out of the Hawaiian chain. But on one end of it, you got you're close that the mantle there's just been cracked so you got lava just flowing out of the ground and into the ocean you saw mm-hmm. it from a helicopter right oh, yeah. and i mean it's incredible that's on one end of the rock well then you go over a little bit this way and remember we went up into those two mountainous areas it was uh-huh. like we were in scotland yeah it was cold. We had to buy oh, jackets. Rain. That's yeah. when we went hog hunting. Yeah. We actually, that was the unseen And it was footage. lush green. Oh, it just was beautiful. I yeah. mean, And at the bottom. It was like a prairie. It was like seven, like the inches, desert. seven inches of rain a year. Right. And up there was like 300 or something. That's what I'm wow. saying. It is yeah. the wettest place. I like Louisiana's number two for rainfall. And that island in Hawaii, was or, the, or the backside of it, yeah. was number one. Yeah. You don't say, is it going to rain? You say, remember that? And for, he said, when's it going to stop raining? <laughs> I thought that was old. When Steve Martin was that's a right, preacher. That's I don't right. forgot the name of that movie. Somebody out there saying it right now. It's uh, actually a pretty good movie. It's pretty good. Leap yeah. of Faith Yeah, what it's called. And, you know, one month a year, they ski on those two mountains. There's enough. It's high enough up where they get actually some snow. Nobody knew you could oh, ski in Hawaii. That. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, it, But when you look at that, I just thought about it. that's probably one of the last ones that to come up out of the water. You know, we're talking, you know, however God did it, but you still can see the creation process because you got all these different climates. What was yep. it seven different climates yeah. on the on the island? So yeah. when I look at that, I'm thinking, man, what, what kind of being came yeah. up with an idea that this molten lava comes up out of the water and forms this rock? that then all of a sudden starts growing all this great stuff on it, and you can ski on it, or you can go look at the lava on the other end? No, well, the Earth's core, <laughs> over millions of years, <laughs> heated to a point where it created a dual... <laughs> uh, you know, that'll give you an explanation. And I'm like, 
Yeah. Who started the fire? <laughs> <laughs> Let's start you, with the creator. You have a fire, you know, like the sun. Who started it? <laughs> well, actually, I mean, you, you just ask people who are smart those simple questions and just watch, watch them squirm. It just it ain't it ain't there. <laughs> that, that, there's not a plausible explanation. Uh, let's take another break. So uh, we know from running a business, you got a lot of stuff that goes on, a lot of stuff you have to take care of. The bigger your base of employees, and of course, we were all really tiny when we first started. But you know, Duck Commander got up at one time, probably during the show running of having about a hundred plus yeah, employees, a lot of people. And one of the issues that you have when you get a lot more, you know, people working for you is uh, human resources issues, HR issues. Cause you got all these labor regulations, minimum wage requirements, termination, you get all sorts of issues. And if you have to hire an HR guy, it's not very cheap. So one of our sponsors uh, has come up with uh, a great solution for especially small businesses called Bambi, B-A-M-B-E-E, and it's specifically made for small business. Uh, basically, they're going to provide you uh, with, uh, by phone, email, real-time chat, an HR manager that you don't have to hire. So you're going to have, you know, you just pay the monthly. No month-to-month, -month, no hidden fees. You can cancel any time. So check these guys out at Bambi.com. B A M B E E dot com slash Robertson. Right now, you get a free HR audit if you go and you sign up. That's Bambi, B A M B E E dot com slash Robertson. And to your point, when we were talking about California a minute ago, because now, boy, they're always looking, these people start fires. But I think I read the other day 92% of all fires, wildfires started in any of those Western states are lightning. Yeah, which yep. has nothing to do with us. That's I mean, right. it's dry ground, it's lightning, it, it starts a fire. So we get to think of sometimes we're bigger than we are in this well, thing, like you said, but it's really not. I mean, that's a net, that's something we ought to do. Let's it's, stop. it's a natural yeah. occurrence, right? No, let's stop lightning. <laughs> let's figure out a way to stop that because it kills uh, people. I'm not sure many, <laughs> but I mean, it does. It starts fires. Let's just stop it. <laughs> yeah, we could do that. I There'll mean, be some group right that think they can. Global warming, stop lightning, and lightning. then let's fix the earthquakes. And then I'd say get tornadoes. That doesn't do anybody any good. <laughs> fix it. Let's fix it. <laughs> so anyway. well, well, speaking of uh, Duck Dynasty, so we know we got a lot of the fans of Unashamed because I read so many emails. This last couple of weeks I've been a little hamster in the wheel trying to return emails, which, by the way, my new email is al at restorationproductions.net. So send your podcast to that because I got a little help. They with need that. to put up one of those little graphics. Yeah, yeah, he's gonna put one up on it. But some people just listen to the show. So well, I what I realize, what I realize is, is from this going back through and trying to answer emails, I'm about, I'm up to about a month behind. Is that so many new people are listening to the podcast that they're just now hearing when I gave out my other email three months ago well, because right. you know say other so we, we have a lot of new we're in a time warp <laughs> but yeah. one of the things i want to talk about was that i know from what every time i read something one is that most of you're saying that's making a huge impact on your life the podcast we're grateful for that because we're unashamed about, we're unashamed about we're, jesus we're willing to talk I mean, about it we're talking yeah. about the bible uh as dad mentioned last time on the podcast a lot of you are coming to get baptized here which is fine with us Again, send me an email. I'll connect you to the right people. We can make that happen uh, if you want to come here to get baptized. But get to know Jesus yeah, in the meantime. That's right. Make sure. If, it's if, Jesus. if you don't know Jesus, you're just getting wet. You can do that anywhere. Yeah. I make sure they understand. <laughs> I wasn't <laughs> chastising you. I was just saying. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Just remember what it's, what it's all not, about. This is not taking a swim. Immortality is riding on this <laughs> on how you feel about Jesus Christ. Well, so right. we you go know. through the whole thing, make sure they understand. But it's not complex. Right. So we've got three or four different locations that we meet at in town. Dad and Mom work at a place over in Monroe, a church plant. Jason and I, are, when we're in town, we're at WFR proper. So we'll let you know all that information um, if, you, if you want to get baptized. But a lot of you have said um, that you your first connection to the family was obviously through the show. A lot of you were huge fans of the show. You, you realize the podcast is just an extension of who we are. I mean, the show was 
was really someone else's idea, but it was about our family. And it was funny, yeah. and we did. And it was edited and embellished. I mean, to be honest, you know what's what's frustrating for me is that I go do events. Of course, the coronavirus has limited those, but yeah. I'm you know they're, they're cranking back up. Yep. And you know, I'm I'm I talk about Jesus number one. I talk about our family because you know loving God, loving people. I talk about the duck calls because a lot of people are like, well, how how did that happen? I usually do a lot of humor around the duck calls. Well, where did this and, question and, come from? Uh, how how long did Jace have to sleep on the couch for putting <laughs> mud on Missy because she wore perfume? I, I said, what? Well, I don't even know what you're talking about. Well. But look, so I'll talk about those three things, and then I'll they'll do a Q&A. Well, here's what's puzzling. I don't really talk about Duck Dynasty, but all the questions are about the show. Right. They're like... What was the question you just asked? <laughs> the question is, how long did Jace have to sleep on the couch for putting mud on Missy because she wore perfume? I don't remember that episode. I do. So that episode right. was when you and Willie took Missy and Corey deer hunting okay. in Sai Stan. And I guess, I don't remember that happening, but I guess you put to put mud on her face or something. I've done that many times. So I guess in the episode you were in trouble. But so face just, paint on her. Yeah. So face I paint. believe the truth is I didn't sleep on the couch. <laughs> so that must have been a temporary. you got to realize in marriage sometimes you say things that you don't mean in the heat of the moment. So she probably said you're sleeping on the couch. But guess what? She didn't follow through with that. So so here's a question for you. So we, so I got some questions. But I mean, are, are we going to do? Duck yeah, Dynasty we're going to do some questions? questions. So these are a lot of you send me questions, uh, and so we we selected a few of them here. We'll do a few of these just because I know people ask a lot of questions about the show, and we appreciate that you watch the show. And by the way, you know the show is still popular because Fox Nation, which is Fox News just went and bought the show and now is running it on their streaming. So there's a lot of people still connecting to it. So we get yeah. that. It's a new generation. Okay. Here's one for you, Dad. Was the judge's pond really owned by a judge? Then and now. Yeah, it is. Yeah, tell us about that. So he's is he a second generation owner? Didn't his yep. his yeah. dad was a judge and now he's a judge, but he owned a property adjacent to our property. Yeah. And uh side note, when I was a teenager he chased me on several occasions. I was going to say. But he doesn't know that was me. <laughs> but I know that was him. Yeah. Now, was this the judge now or the older judge? Because we were no, afraid. that's his daddy. Yeah, that's, we were okay. afraid. I was afraid well, his of dad. Him. You're going back to the judge's dad. Well, the, the judge's dad chased me all over the two properties. <laughs> he's a because, great guy. Because his is, pond, but, look. But we the, used to go fishing over there. Yeah, and then we go one, fishing. One day, 75 vehicles came down the road going into my house and when they all pulled up out in the yard and this was, you know, the traffic was getting uh, out of hand during the Duck Dynasty thing. Well, I, I go up there and I tell the judge, I said, Judge, I said, I'm going to have to put up a gate here. I said, now, we got two choices. I can put it on my property line and you'll be on the outside of the gate. Or... I can put it on your property line over here, and you'll be inside the gate. I said, but it's your call. I don't care what what you, what you want to do. So you want to be inside the gate I'm going to put up, or do you want to be outside <laughs> the gate? no brain. He said, Phil, put me inside the gate. <laughs> he's inside the gate. I said, Phil, it's a good I idea. said, consider it done. So I put the gate, so he's inside the gate, and that, that knocked out because we want people to come. We have a place they can come yeah. if they just want to. We want to talk it over. We we convert people. You're not going to hear some stories about. You're going you're going to hear the story of Jesus, and if you want me to baptize you, I'll do it. But back in the day before Duck Dynasty, mm -hmm. I could just people take them to the river, take them to the river, take them to the river. <clears throat> but now yeah. there's there was so structure. much traffic. I have to curtail it because I have to have some semblance of a life. We had to have some structure. The, yeah, because yeah, we still want to do it, but we want to do it where it's not necessarily. Yeah, yeah, you got to remember. I mean, it, it's just a. We just got to remember. There's a lot of people, and there's just there's just us. So that's right. Let's take so a, let's take another break. You know, I I said before, if you don't know what you're doing, 
you need to do it quickly. <laughs> but in this case, <laughs> that won't work because if you're losing your hair, it's really not up to you. Well, and the quicker so, you lose it, the worse yeah. the result. So I will add another slogan. <laughs> if you don't know what you're doing, call somebody who does. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. That's a good one. There you go. And call our friends uh, at Keeps. Uh, they're the ones that are trying to help us keep our hair. Uh, so if you go to keeps.com, that's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash door, you get 50% off your first order of Keeps hair loss treatments. And um, they've got a safe product, one that'll come directly to your door. You go online, you don't have to go see a doctor, you don't have to go to the drugstore and all the things you would normally have to do. So go to keeps.com slash door, you get 50% off your first order. That's keeps.com slash door. If you don't know what you're doing... Yeah. Call somebody who does. Who? It, don't and ask Jay's why. Has, he has a look now. He cuts the beard off. I did. Leaves the hair. I cut my hair off and leave the beard. There you go. So yeah. it's. But you know what's disturbing? You're the first person that noticed that I actually trimmed my beard. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can tell it just. <laughs> shoot, it just. You're right. I, I cut half of it off. <laughs> yeah. This, this, you got to watch this because this will this get tangled up and stuff. So we're asking Doug Dynasty yep. questions. We're asking Doug Dynasty questions. Here's one for you okay. guys. Because this was Good. this was from one of my favorite episodes. So Unlike Phil, I haven't seen these questions. Uh, does the family personally know Hacksaw Jim Duggan? Well, yes. And tell, yeah. tell how that happened. We didn't know him before the episode, personally. Well, well, right. I mean, I've forgotten the details, but, I mean, he was... So, so just to set it up, Jace and I and Willie... Loved wrestling, mid mid south wrestling. That that look when my childhood was filled with wrestling. So moves. Saturday, and, and some of the greatest moves that I ever did, you were a witness to some oh, yeah. of them. I performed on one Willie because <laughs> you look at the size of him, you're thinking, how in the world did you pull those moves off? It's called leverage. A lot of wrestling is about leverage. <laughs> so what we would do, so we watched Mid-South Wrestling, and Hacksaw Jim Duggan has to be our all-time favorite. He was patriotic. He had that two-by-four. Oh, I yeah. mean, he was just a redneck, you know. But we would we would put a quilt down, which was our ring in the living room, on Saturday night, and then we would watch wrestling. And then as soon as wrestling was over, then we would we would do some of the things. You'd we'd start wrestling. We started oh, yeah. wrestling. We, we would do the moves uh, we just yeah. tried. Jake the Snake. I broke uh, bone. We had we, various, Yeah, the problem was we were yeah. breaking bones. <laughs> and it's kind of like Duck Dynasty. Our show was based on I'm true y'all, stories. I know I'm y'all, your father <laughs> yeah. is seated here, but I never even paid any attention to that. I think you're already in the bed by the time all this. Which shows you our house. You know what? One of the questions I get asked at these events that I never have an answer to is a lot of people, usually women, they'll say, where were your parents? When I'll tell a story about what. And I said, you know, I don't know. (laughs) I I, I don't don't, know. I don't remember. Now, you call me dad. Right. Jace calls me Phil. Yeah, so does Willie. And, and a lot of people say, and Willie calls, calls me We get Phil. that question a lot. I think that's the yeah. number one question. Jeff, the youngest one, calls me Dad. Yeah. You call me Dad. Call me Dad. But the two in the middle call me Phil. Like, I'm, hey, how you doing, Phil? Pretty good. So, <laughs> Well, a lot of people, I, a lot think of people have asked me, and they said, well, that is, that, is that a sign of disrespect? Yeah. And I said, not to me. Right. I said, you know, my name is Phil. So tell them the theory. <laughs> but, so whether tell it's them. dad or Phil, you say, what's the dip? You know, so I, I don't, I don't think know. I, the what's your the number one answer was that since the business was tied to was the personal phone, you wouldn't say, hang on, let me get my dad. Because they would say, I'd like to speak, like to, to, speak Phil to Phil Robertson. Robertson. I'm like, Daddy, come here. <laughs> I would say... <laughs> Hold on for a second. And I will <laughs> they were trying to be professional, Phil, you know. Phil line one. That explains and it. We we did What's, do that a lot, and then we just it just kind of became. I well, never hey. thought about it till someone asked me about it and said, "But are they disrespecting you, the two middle ones?" And I'm like, "No." Well, it's probably true because I do notice since I do a lot of business for you and with you with your books and all that that if I'm talking with a publicist about you, I may say I would say Phil probably. We'll get Phil to do it. See what I'm saying? In a business world, 
I tend to even do that now myself. But if it's just me talking about you, I would usually say that. You know what's funny is a lot of people that didn't like our show or us, they were like, these people are fakes. We have found pictures of them (laughs) clean shaven on a beach. I'm like, we posted those, <laughs> you moron. <laughs> because what now the only thing dishonest is the exact opposite. What we would do every year since we were the salesmen and the manufacturers of the duck calls, we would all shave and this wear the, khakis. The post dad era when you and Willie. Yeah, kind of when took we were right. selling the duck calls and go to shows. And and you say, well, why'd you do that? Why not be yourself? Because when we all look like we normally do, bearded and scraggly, no one would stop at our booth. (laughs) And so if you would wear nicer clothes and shave, then they would stop at your booth, talk about these characters who you found who make the duck calls, which is us, but they don't really. Because the beards weren't really branded. It was just, you were trying to sell duck calls. I remember being in a meeting, I think it was Cabela's. I was in a meeting. All the you know, Camilla's pretty big, big deal. I'm trying to sell them the duck calls, and one of the women said, "I mean, where did you find these guys?" And I, because she was looking at the cover of one of our videos, of which I was on, <laughs> but that was the bearded version, and I wanted to say that's actually me, but I just couldn't do it because <laughs> I thought I'll just give in to the narrative and I want to eat steak instead of, you know. <laughs> so I'm trying to get you to buy our duck off. So that was the only thing that we really did coming up that was really not us because I remember I thought, but I'm trying to sell the duck calls and I can't get my foot in the door with the bearded look, which is how I really was. Right. So, so that's part of that whole deal. And my old take on it was, ah, you don't have to worry about talking to them. If they want them, they'll call us. <laughs> you know, they said, Which is really not yeah, a great dad, business you get model. Dad was not really a marketer or network Ter- guy. To your Terrible. credit, you did say. I've never been a businessman or a promoter. But you, but but you, you, you said if God want, yeah. wants this to happen, and, and it was kind of like you know when we had our, our guest Rex. I mean, it doesn't mean you're going to be lazy. I mean, we was working our butts off. But you were kind of like, if God wants this to happen, it'll happen. But, Dad, you also built a foundation of credibility because you were trying to make calls that sounded exactly like what they were supposed to call. Yep. And so your focus was much more on that than on the trying to that make it a business. Or, or, and back then, but, marketing wasn't really the driving force. Of it. I mean, you right. weren't sitting around talking about we, your brain. Jace you did end you up didn't have as, as many the better salesman. He could go talk to the Walmart buyers, and they'd have a Well, Jace had the mix of both. Yeah. I mean, he had to, enough of the credibility and ability to use it, but then also was kind of a bridge. Jace, for one time, went to meet with Walmart. We're all down here saying, boy, you know, hope it goes well. Well, Miss Kay was asking about him. Well, he comes back. We said, Jace, how, what, what, how, many, how big is the order? Jace said, nope. No order. He said, I, I, I walked away from the table. I said, you did what? Yeah, I did. He said, I walked away from the table. He said, he'll come around. He said, but he's driving too hard to bargain on that price. And he said, so I'm on. Which was one of the it. worst decisions I ever made was telling you the actual truth. Because after that, I never did again. And, you know, <laughs> we'd come back and Kay would call, well, how's the big order? You know, how'd it go? I said, oh, it went fantastic. I hung up. And Missy's like, you didn't tell him that you got up and walked out. And he said, I will never buy your duck calls as long as I live. I I left that part out. But it was just in negotiations. You, there, there was a price. Jace was quite the negotiator. Well, there was a price that it's not rocket science. There was a price that I thought, because I'm looking at all the numbers, y'all are not. This is not worth it. We cannot survive and make a, a comfortable living on this price. So it's just out of the question. And Walmart's whole model is to you take it down to the The Walmart buyer ran up on Jace a few years later, and he said, I was just bluffing. He <laughs> well, said, I told you. I, I he said, I, I don't watch them old DVDs. Yeah. He said, I watched them one. Of them. <laughs> but he said, I didn't want Jace to think. You know, okay, you, you got me. Well, but he, he said he, they trained us to do that. Yeah, he's like, yeah. we had to put you to the test because they know if you pass, I'm not caving in. I have the number. And so that's the number. But that's why I was saying that that's why the foundation of all this, every business model, if you got a product, 
you need to be able to have people that want to want that product. If you, a lot of this stuff now is built totally on just smoke and mirrors. Yep. They're instead, marketing instead and, of demand. That's right. They're marketing and branding things that aren't worth a crap. And but so that's I, the, I, you know. I will say this, Al. I was street smart, but like Willie was more. He did. I mean, when he took over, it was way better because yeah. he he did the same things. He just didn't. He wasn't so well, but Willie, in his approach, and he was out, and Willie's I'm one like, of his I'm out of here. one of his greatest <laughs> gifts is being able to get in with a group of people and build a bridge. I mean, he, he's, he's great. Really, at he's it. really really good at it, and so that helped us kind of mark the whole thing. Let's let's take one last break. So uh, here's a, here's a pretty good one. Is uh, oh, did we finish with Hacksaw Jim Duggan? We never finished that. So well, he, he was on foggy. I well, mean, he, so here's the deal. So we had the wrestling, and he they did a surprise reveal. We didn't know he was going to be on the episode. They had, oh he, no, I didn't know. A he, big truck backed up, and you had a couple of wrestlers, which were local guys. They were professional wrestlers, but they were from this area. And then all of a sudden, you have you know Hacksaw Jim Duggan comes out. Of course, it was funny. We they were, were the only wrestlers I've ever actually seen in person. Yeah, and it and look, it well, was cold. It no, was... let me let me give you the backstory. Uh, there there was a few episodes that were filmed from a distance, and that was one of them. None of us knew they were coming because we were doing that for Mia. Right, it's the Mia and, episode, and we told them because they would interview us during the week, like what y'all got going. Like we're gonna do this. You're welcome to film it, but. And what I mean from a distance is some things we, you know, you would film, and then that we would have to film it again because in the camera world they get close ups and wides, and so it is. You're kind of you've already filmed it, but they have to get their shots on that particular deal. It's a one; they shot it one time, they got it. It was an event. All it, of our it, family, it all the Robertson family was on the episode, all your siblings. Yeah. I think only Judy was the only one that wasn't still alive. And that was cool to us because all our cousins got to be on it. But it was brutally cold, and the wrestlers had these little tights on and no shirt. And, I mean, it is cold. It's one of those losing us about 32 with about a 18, 20-mile-hour northwest wind. Both days we filmed. Brutal. And I, I just remember being cold the whole the whole time we filmed. These guys come out, and one of them, the local wrestlers, came out, and Willie said, "Dude, I don't want to, you know, sound too personal, but right now your nipples could cut glass." <laughs> yeah, I remember that. We all laugh. <laughs> well, <laughs> it once was again, a... saying what everyone's thinking, because I was <laughs> like, "It's one thing to be out here, and we're all cold. These guys don't have a shirt on." So, so Hacksaw comes out. They do some wrestling. We're going crazy because we didn't know they were bringing him on the show, and he was literally our childhood favorite. And uh, of course, Hacksaw. This has been you know twenty five years ago, so he's a little saggy. This you know he had yeah. just some regular shorts on. But you know what, that guy was awesome. He was I mean, awesome, and we yeah. met him. And so he, here's what I wanted to tell about, which is why I wanted to ask this question. So that was the first day of film, and the second day they came back out and I think shot one more scene, wrestling scene, and then they wanted to do a big picture with these guys before with the with all of us, and we couldn't find Hacksaw. We couldn't find Dad. And so I said, well, I'll go up. Usually they send some PA. I said, I'll go, I'll go look for him. So I went up to the house. And Dad's sitting in the, the recliner. Hacksaw Jim Duggan is, is down on his, just sitting down on the floor. And there's a, your, you know, your kick thing is up on your chair. And you've got your Bible laid out. And I just remember walking in. It was just such a surreal thing because I thought Hacksaw Jim Duggan is sitting on the floor <laughs> yeah. where we used to watch him and redo all his moves, and you were just sharing Jesus with him, which he was mm-hmm. a, he was already a believer, but you were just making sure, you know, and y'all were having a discussion. So I turned around and went back out, and I said, hey, they, they got a thing going on. We'll do that in just a few minutes. I mean, I wanted that to play itself out. Yep. But I just thought that was a really surreal but You know, moment. every story you could tell about guests like that, I mean, you could say the same thing was easy talk. We were with them numerous times. And they wanted to be a part of oh, our yeah. show right. as much as we wanted them to be a part of it. And we got to know them, and we had the same conversations, and right. we hung out. I mean... I think as many you, times as we've listened to their music, I was thinking, you know, going down the road, me, you, and Willie, you know, we love ZZ Top. And then later, yeah. who would ever know 20 years later, we'd all be doing a well, show. I look again. back on those were some of the moments I did love about the show is we were just hanging out, talking about really what you want, just life yeah. and, and, you know, goofing off. But 
I'm sure behind the scenes, whoever was making those decisions about getting people lined up, I'm sure it was chaos and all. But from our perspective, it was just enjoying relationships. And I, I think you think it's, you know, people think it's a bigger deal. And we're just, everybody's just normal human beings when you, right. when you peel everything back. And we like their music. They like how we live life. So it was actually a, a perfect and match. He was a you know? race car driver as a Boyer. Oh, yeah. He was on an episode. He was a great guy. I, I mean, that. we just had a lot of fun every time there was the the guests were yeah. involved. Yeah. Well, it's kind of so. like it is with the podcast. I love when we have somebody on here. Yeah. Um, it just kind of gives you another view of other people's world. Well, I will say this. We're about out of time. I, I think as I started with this, the – all the stuff that happened on the show and the fun we had doing it and the fun the audience had. Cause so many people, I get so many emails that talk about, I was going through the worst time. I just got one this week. I, you know, they had a kid in the hospital and, you know, it was just a tough time for them. And then, the, but the show it was like a, was like a something they could escape. Yeah, to, two know. short no's here. The last question, do you miss filming the show? <laughs> no. <laughs> Will you ever reprise the show? No. <laughs> what do you have to say about that, Jace? That's I mean, me. We may be on other shows. I mean, you can probably tell. We get asked so many questions about the show. I don't really. This is not one of my favorite things to do. But I realize that we get them so much. People want to know. Yeah. And so we don't mind every once in a while answering Well, I'll tell questions. you the impact I had, Dad. So, right. so I met a girl in Iowa. And we were signing books, and she came up to me. And she's a college age girl, and she said, "I just want to tell you what Duck Dynasty meant to me all my teenage years." So her whole high school career, freshman to senior, was the run of the show, and she said we got together every Wednesday night after church with all my closest friends and watched the show. And when she was telling me this story, it hit me. I thought her whole childhood, or I mean, her whole like teenage years, she's going to connect to our show. She'll mm-hmm. never forget that, the impact that it was. Her friends, it was her social event of her life. Huh. And so when I saw that, I thought, man, there's a lot of people out there that have been impacted, more than we know. Well, but and Al, so- I will say this. Whenever this comes up, I'll say the same thing because I believe it 100%. What what's, was refreshing is that Hollywood does not represent middle America shows and, and the mm-hmm. thing, our lifestyle. And so we finally had something, and we, we all know it kind of, got on air by accident because they weren't right they didn't want us just to be ourselves and represent middle america i think the idea was kind of to make fun of us a little bit i think that's where it started and uh but i don't think the show could i don't think the show would ever air today like i think now now with this polarized climate we couldn't we couldn't even get on there so what happened was (laughs) and i'll just tell you in the normal making of a show the talent is threatened now they call us the talent and they're threatened monetarily or mm. but you know they hadn't met our family it's like oh no we don't do i threat. said so <laughs> many things about spiritual matters when they would give us those interviews uptown yep. we drive up there but they never run them they never they never ran them well that's me people always and ask just, me. They're, they're i like, just didn't like the idea i wanted to get some to get the gospel out there but here's where but, god gets the last all, all we his, got away with was a prayer and we but were here's where god gets that. the last laugh but don't all, knock the power that's of right prayer. because uh, because of that happening though deb even though they never aired it that's what's created this vehicle for us to be able to because these are yeah. the same folks that are watching uh, well, everybody i run right. up on they you're say right. the same thing they say you're way more skinny than you looked on tv because <laughs> tv makes you look bigger mm-hmm. and you're way more serious and I'm like, well, every time I was serious or had a spiritual conversation, I knew that wasn't going to make it because <laughs> no, it the power it. of editing that, you know, I, I mean, I goof off. Some, it just sort of grated on me that <laughs> I, I would, I want to tell people yeah, about it's, Jesus. Look, it's all part well, of the plan. Not me because I think what happened is, is God allowed that to be a success so that later we would have avenues like this to tell what we really believe. And look, we do have Pretty a good weird, I guess we, we do have a good time because we're not thin skinned, which in our culture I think is a breath yeah. of fresh air. Yes, yes. But really it's because we all truly believe that we're forgiven and that we're going to heaven, we're gonna live forever. So yeah. we don't take ourselves that seriously. And when you do that, 
a lot of good times come out of that. I mean, you can make fun of each other all the way. I mean, right. if I didn't couldn't make fun of Willie, I wouldn't even know <laughs> our relationship or, or, would or crumble. Him, or him, you. <laughs> yeah, or him, me. And guess what? I can take it. <laughs> all right. That's all for this edition. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed Podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube and be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.